rising home loan rates and rising input prices, is buying a property getting too expensive in India? Not really. If one goes by the recent house pricing tracker released by Credai in partnership with Lysis Foras and Colliers. Now, according to the latest findings, housing prices in India's top eight cities have seen an average increase of 5% over the last one year. Which are these top cities which are most in demand and where can you buy the cheapest homes? Let's get the insights from Mr. Harsh Vardhan Patodia, President of Credai National. We also have with us Ramesh Nair, CEO India and MD Market Development Asia Colliers and Pankaj Kapoor, Founder and MD of Lysis for us. Mr. Patodia, I'm going to come to you because I need one immediate answer. Of course, uh, you know, with home loan rates going up, HDFC has just bumped it up to over 8%. And, you know, we were sub 6%, uh, sorry, sub 7% just a few quarters back. Overall mood, how has it been, sir, on the rate hike? See, short term, definitely we feel that rate hike is going to impact the sentiment of the home buyer. But on the other hand, what we are seeing is that the uh, take-home pay of the home buyer across the country is also rising. And with the tremendous rise in input cost and the hike in interest rate and the state of inflation in India and across the world, I think the central bank did something which was inevitable in these circumstances of turbulent times and the geo geopolitical tensions. There could be a small concern, but I don't think it's such a large concern that the sales will be impacted okay. in a very, very negative way. I think people are going to accept it. And we will see that there's a robust demand of housing all over the country. And we expect that during the next quarter, which is the festive season, sales will be buoyant. <clears throat> okay. Uh, fair point. Let's see how the festive season pans out this year. We will do a discussion after that. Uh, Ramesh Nair, I'm looking at the report and saying, all right, so, you know, NCR prices have gone up the most, but it was also the most depressed market uh, for the last three, four years. That's gone up by 10%. Uh, some other markets have gone up just by 1%, as little as 1% is what I see in Kolkata and Chennai. On an average, across top eight cities is 5%. Now, this is not even as much as what we've been facing as inflation. To, so, to me, it seems like it's good news for home buyers, but developers are still struggling to raise prices. So, Manisha, uh, you spoke about the 5% year-on-year uh, increase, uh, which we have seen uh, in Q2 uh, this uh, this year, calendar uh, year this year. Uh, what we're seeing is uh, the prices have uh, uh, surpassed uh, the pre-pandemic levels. That's a very important uh, point uh, we should uh, note. And uh, that basically signifies uh, robust uh, housing demand and uh, supply which is uh, well aligned uh, with uh, demand. So I think that's the first thing we should share about is pricing have finally kind of come from the uh, uh, from all the downward trends we saw in COVID, it's kind of crossed that. Second is uh, average price increase of 5%, definitely uh, not bad. Uh, Manisha, we shouldn't forget uh, the lull in the overall industry from 2014 to maybe 2020 or maybe even till mid of uh, 2021. So after a long time, we're seeing good capital appreciation across the country. And you look at uh, a market like uh, Hyderabad, which uh, from the first quarter of 2019 to today, prices have gone up like nearly 30%, which is uh, definitely a good sign. NCR has gone up around 16%. I think these are some of definitely things we should uh, look at. And all the cities, Manisha, we noticed, saw a dip in uh, unsold inventory. Again, uh, which is a very good uh, sign, except Hyderabad and Ahmedabad, uh, where, where it was uh, a little bit uh, unsold uh, inventory went up. But overall, very good signs in the residential market. Okay. So, so, you know, I know that all of you are celebrating the fact that demand has crossed eight cities, uh, uh, in the eight cities has crossed the pre-pandemic levels. Pankaj, you know, I'm... Can you uh, give me a future projection and say, where are we going to end 2022 at? And is that number going to fall short of or at least equal what we sold in the peak time or peak years of 2013-14? Because, you know, I'm going to start celebrating only when we reach that number. To me, that means real recovery for the sector. My own sense is probably uh, we are already at the peak, I think. 
if you see the mortgage industry data and our data itself, I think uh, we are peaking. We never really sold this many number of units. And my own sense, we are going to really surpass the uh, last peaks. And, and the reason being is that we have uh, willing developers who are absorbing the increase in the uh, prices and the burden uh, and they're not passing on to the consumers. Another thing which you need to see the, the last two, three quarters, we are seeing unprecedented uh, flow of the new supply and new supply is bringing a uh, fresh incentives to the consumer and and this flow of the new supply is clearly suggesting that the volumes will continue to be growing and we'll be probably touching the uh, the new peaks uh, the real estate market has so far with mr patodia fair enough numbers are looking good the value of sales is of course also now peaking at its all-time high and we may make a new peak unsold inventory let's come to that uh, you know uh, the fact that developers are launching new supply, but we still have a pretty high number of unsold inventory across the top eight cities, uh, Mumbai being the largest. But your uh, sense, uh, will that not uh, keep prices also depressed or let's say very, very stable? You know, when somebody is buying a home, they do want to see appreciation in the price of home that they are buying into. So too much supply is not that great for the market unless absorption matches. Manisha, I think too little supply also not good for the market. <laughs> I would so, agree. Probably we need to have a balance between supply and demand. And see, all the supply which is kind of coming in is not ready to move in. If you look at a ready to move in inventory, which is very, very low. I think it's the lowest in the last six, seven years which we have seen. So anything which is under construction will definitely have a timeline of completion. But overall, we see what we see that the Indian economy is still the, one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And we are talking about a 5 trillion economy in the next few years. I think unless we have supply, there will be tremendous shortage of housing in the country, which we don't want as an industry. Supply and demand has to be balanced. And I think what most of the inventory which we are talking about are, is under construction. So and any under construction project takes some time to complete. It's a cycle of at least three to four years before the inventory comes in, uh, into the market as a <clears throat> ready to move in inventory. I think there will, my take is in the next five years, we we'll always have a shortage of ready to move in inventory in India, in all the segments, including uh, ultra premium, HIG, LIG. That's my take uh, in the future. Okay. Fair point that, you know, 90% of the inventory is for under construction projects and they have a sort of a time period in which the inventory gets sold and closer to them being ready, of course, the sales are the fastest. Uh, I'm still very concerned, Ramesh, about uh, Mumbai inventory, uh, unsold inventory. It's at a very high percentage of 36%. And I'm continuing to look at all the average prices. And of course, we will continue to flash them on the screen for our viewers to know what are the average rates per square feet in different cities. Mumbai is still holding on to 19,700 rupees. And, you know, it's a very wide market, very disparate market. Um, but... Just give me a sense of Mumbai market. Uh, is it likely to get cheaper now that there is so much inventory or do you think that prices will probably, you know, just hover around where they are? So, Manisha, like we discussed, uh, unsold inventory saw a dip in most of the markets. Uh, I mean, it's this uh, robust uh, sales. Bangalore saw the steepest decline, 21% drop in uh, uh, inventory. Uh, Pune saw 15% drop in uh, inventory, both great signs. Uh, like Harshi said, 90% uh, of this unsold inventory is under construction. So only 10% of this is uh, actually completed. So there's no cause for alarm. What we see in those Chinese cities of so many completed apartments lying vacant or whatever, that's just 10% uh, here. MMR still accounts uh, for the highest uh, share in unsold inventory. Uh, of the 36, it's nearly 36% of the overall uh, unsold inventory. One more thing about MMR, what we should remember, Manisha, is if you remember the last year, the government had given a lot of incentives with regards to reducing premiums. If it applied for uh, your permission approvals uh, before a particular date, you got 50% waiver of uh, the premium cost. So there are a lot of projects which went uh, into drawing board stage, a lot of projects which went into construction. That's something we need to uh, kind of uh, remember. 
Second is uh, MMR uh, always uh, has been a very very uh, robust uh, market, and today it's a much bigger market. It's uh, when we look at the MMR market, uh, the suburb extension, which is Kalyan, Domivili, Badlapur. There's a lot of land there, and there's a lot of supply which is uh, being created. So uh, difficult and wrong to kind of paint the entire MMR market with uh, one brush. One thing which kind of is of concern today is obviously the home loan rates. Uh, same time last year. For a lakh of loan, uh, for uh, every one lakh rupee loan, you were paying around seven hundred and sixty rupees uh, as EMI. Today, that seven hundred and sixty rupees has become around eight hundred and twelve rupees. So that's something uh, which uh, the industry needs to be uh, worried about. If uh, everyone is talking about more interest rate hikes, uh, so that will definitely have uh, could have an impact uh, on the housing demand. Okay. Pankaj, would you agree that uh, you don't see any pressure on Mumbai region with so much supply coming up? A supply, I mean, new launches also have been phenomenally higher because of the premium discount that the developers got, plus the fact that it's sitting on so much of unsold inventory, even if it's under construction. I mean, I would love to hear that Mumbai market will get a little bit cheaper. However wide it is, even a Badlapur or you're going to Navi Mumbai, it's it's not an inexpensive market at any any end. You know, if you look at it, this is very wide, and uh, you divide the Mumbai uh, MMR region into two region, which is Greater Mumbai and and the rest of the MMR region. You would find the rest of the MMR is having a price equivalent to what you would find Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Pune. And when it comes to Greater Mumbai, because land scarcity is and high populations, uh, scarcity of the land and the prices, and it has always been higher. And uh, when it comes to the pricing, we have seen. a uh, muted growth in the property prices if you see the mmr has shown just 1% growth in the property prices and the uh, and and the because of the new launches during this quarter we saw 32000 which is historically the highest ever uh, flow of the new launches even the previous quarter we saw a good amount of new launches which is there so i would say that the pricing pressure will continue to be holding but i don't see a decline and dip in the property prices from here Uh, because we see a parities of 2003-2004. Uh, if you see that last uh, uh, four or five years, there is no increase in the property prices, and then the interest rate during the period has gone down. And my own sense is, as long as the interest rates remains below nine percent, the market is able to absorb. Even in past, we have seen when it goes, it start it starts going over nine nine and a half percent. That kind of impact which will happen. Okay. because of the under construction property i see the under construction property will continue to be at at the discounted rate and because of that you would find the city lay with uh, average prices may probably show kind of a stagnancy ready properties are having a growth in the property prices uh, at all india level we have seen during this quarter, uh, quarter out of uh, 15000 projects close to Uh, 14% projects have re- declined the property prices. Mm-hmm. 66% projects have shown zero to five percent increase, and only 20% projects have shown more than five percent growth in the property prices. And Pankaj, that shows that Pankaj, how the spread is. I'm going to come back and get that data from you because I want to see which are the ones which have actually managed to increase the prices. Project level data sounds so much more interesting than city level. But anyway, I'm going to. Co- I have one more important question to cover, and that's Hyderabad. Ramesh, Hyderabad has completely surprised me. I mean, you. Ha- when did Hyderabad become more expensive than Bangalore and Pune? Mm-hmm. So is this suddenly happened? Yes, 30 percent prices have gone up, but this is a city where there is no FSI limit. So why is Hyderabad so expensive? Why is it just you know pushed up thirty percent? So uh, Manisha, we saw a year-on-year price rise of around eight percent in Hyderabad. I would attribute this to the amount of jobs being created. Hyderabad is an extremely robust uh, office market, thanks to a lot of good quality Bangalore developers moving in and starting to build office projects there, and also because of the proactive, uh, proactive nature of the government there of attracting uh, companies. Uh, in uh, hyderabad we saw in 2000 uh, 2019 we saw hyderabad office market actually very close to overtaking bangalore which is uh, been the biggest office market in the country for the last 10 15 years so i would attribute this uh, this to a lot of uh, job creation a lot of good quality uh, construction uh, happening leading to uh, robust uh, price increases 
All right, Mr. Patodia, Ramesh Nair, and Pankaj, thank you very much for joining me today on the property show. When we come back, we tell you what is that one tax exemption benefit that startup and tech founders are using to buy luxury property, residential, in fact, and whether you can use it too.